Hey, this is Patria Burchard, whom you may know as Ryoko. Welcome to TenchiCast. Perfect. Good. <laughs> Excellent job. That was awesome. We have goosebumps right now. I was going to say, oh. my, 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 my <laughs> mind is tingling right now. That was awesome. Just so you know, Patria, <laughs> if we're all quiet, it's because we're we're just trying to contain ourselves with excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, I, my neighbors would make so much fun of me right now. <laughs> if they knew anybody was getting goosebumps. That, but you just have made my day already. We could stop right now and I'd be happy for a week. Well, we'll be happy for the rest of our lives. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. That's wonderful. Well, I'll talk to your neighbors if I have to. <laughs> like, hey, yeah, you're darn right she has fans. So, <laughs> oh, Thank you so much. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the first episode of an exciting new series of TenchiCast aptly titled The Interview Adventures. And, of course, yet another exciting episode, courtesy of TenchiForum.com. Tenchi Muyo is fondly remembered for a menagerie of reasons, its fantastic settings, outlandish plot, but most of all, for the diverse characters who tell the story. And none are as fondly remembered as the blue-haired space pirate Ryoko, brought to life and personified by actress, writer, photographer patria burchard thank you so much miss burchard for being with us today oh it's my pleasure thank you where do we start so miss burchard tell us what you have been working on lately mm. well thank you for asking i have been working uh really really hard to get my novel published hopefully before christmas and it's called camelot and vine and that's like Hollywood and Vine. Uh, Camelot and Vine is a story of a failed Hollywood actress who falls in love with the wrong king in the wrong century, in the wrong shoes. <laughs> and she's, uh, well, she has a lot of adventures with King Arthur. And we're right now we're uh, typesetting and getting the cover ready. And I'm pretty excited. I've been working on it for a long time. So... I want, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you, to you guys today is um, because I want to talk to Tenchi fans about it because I know a lot of them have asked me what I've been doing and I don't want to um, just sell to people. I want them to buy the book and read it, but I don't want to just like send them advertising. So that's one thing I thought maybe I would ask people about, you know. How do they want to find out about it? How do they want to hear about it? That's my big question. But we don't have to talk about that all day. I was actually going to start the podcast off with that. Um, does anybody have any any idea for Petraea? Petraea? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we know well, I'll um, answer to it. Well, um, Jonathan here, who goes by the name of Who on our forum, he um, recently put up on our forum, actually, um, links to Amazon for short stories of yours so i think we've oh. a lot of us have already uh have uh, been exposed to and have gotten advertisement right from tenshi fans for tenshi fans so that's the sort of thing that that really i probably would have wouldn't have stumbled across it if it wasn't for that so i think yeah fan outreach is uh something that they would work really well wow that's really nice of you jonathan i hadn't thought about posting it on tenshi forum is, oh yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Of, of course, of course. Well, you know, I, I, uh, you know, it, it's funny how um, people that that uh, that know you, Patria, know that you, of course, don't want to come off as as you know, hey, buy my product, you know, and you know, like you said, trying to uh, trying to sell it. So, um, so yeah, you know, for for that reason, as well as um, you know, I, obviously, I was. I was probably in, initially interested in or knew about your work uh, because of your work with with Tenchi, but but you know as a writer and as a as a reader myself, you know I was uh, I was very drawn to uh, 
you know the the prospect of of your own writing endeavors um you know from from a, a little bit different place you know i i, I yeah. can't really put the right words for it but you know but i mean we've talked about that on facebook yeah you know? definitely right? yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so I just felt um, because I knew you were you know you were so modest about that. I just I just uh, wow. you know within our small circle on on the forum, you know whenever you would uh, you would have an announcement regarding that or something, um, I would say uh, you know I would just say hey you guys uh, this is I think this is worth checking out and uh, and you know I mean heck I you know I'm sincere about that. I I don't think I'm just you know, hey, I'm just pushing uh, Patria's stuff. I, I was like, hey, if you want to, you know, like your uh, your recent short story, I, I love short stories, and, and I thought that was uh, I thought that was a wonderful read, and so I, I just like sharing that uh, sharing Thank that with you. people. Yeah, so I, I, I oh, I'm sorry, go, go right ahead. <laughs> I, say, I made it into an audio book, and it's not very easy to find, so maybe I'll, I'll post that on Tenchi Forum. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think okay. we'd love to hear that. And I okay. think your I think your Facebook, um, you know, you have. Um, I, uh, forgive me if I is it is it uh, is it Petrea Inc. Petrea Inc. Is that Petrea uh, Bertrand Inc. Petrea yeah, Bertrand. Inc. That's yeah, yeah. I think that's a great way to to go about um, uh, promoting, uh, you know, your your uh, your book and or and other uh, literary endeavors because you know I'm uh, I'm going to be. I'm going to be getting done with uh, with school here pretty soon, and uh, and I'm going to be facing these these similar challenges of of in this day and age. I think a lot of people uh, from every uh, walk of life and and levels of experience in in the the field of publishing uh, are kind of trying to figure out um, you know how how to go about you know just the whole the promotion yeah. and publishing process with the internet nowadays. All well, of these businesses are changing. You know, we saw the music business change. The publishing business is now going through all of this. And the film business is going to go through it, too. It's all, mm -hmm. yeah, not the way it was when I was growing up. And even when I was in my young adulthood, um, these things are all way different than they used to be. We're all kind of on our own now. I think one thing that would really kind of advertise itself, so to speak, is, mm -hmm. like was mentioned, use your Facebook. Because that's, that's obviously a lot more personal than, say, uh, posting yeah. links to something like... Well, I mean, even the Amazon one, that's not, that's not too, I guess you would call, corporate heavy. I don't know if that's the right word to use. Yeah. But I think one thing that would also be uh, really fantastic and re would really utilize how the Tenchi fans know you is... I know that you post videos regularly to your uh, YouTube channel. Uh, maybe you had said that you had posted a an excerpt from Camelot and Vine on your on your website. It's on my website, yeah. Maybe if posting a short excerpt of you reading it and posting that to your YouTube, mm. people would see that and they would hear your voice, and that would kind of be like the segue. That would kind of be how people would be like, oh, hey, you know, she's she's doing something. I'm going to go check this out. And I think that that would, I personally think that would be something that um, people would be interested in as well as maybe an audiobook version of Camelot and Vine. I have family members that go on uh, trips. They love to travel. Mm -hmm. And what they'll do is they'll put in, you know, Angels and Demons on audiobook or uh, another novel and just listen to it. And it's it's something nice and I think for uh, Tenchi fans, it would be it, it would be like icing on the cake because not only are we are we listening to a novel, but we're listening to a novel in the voice that, for many of us, we fondly, fondly remember. Ah, I should hire you guys as my advertising agency. <laughs> yeah, I, I I agree. I think um, using your voice would be would be the best way to go because you've got such a wonderful voice and such a recognizable oh. voice, and. As, as a former voice actress, I'm sure I don't have to tell you, but the, the power of a voice is, is awesome. And I think if uh, if they could hear you actually talking about it or, or reading from it, it would it would immediately sell it. It would immediately link it right back, and it would be a much more personal thing. So I would I would I would love to see it on your uh, your YouTube uh, an excerpt on your YouTube channel. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's really great, you guys. I um, it's funny because I hadn't actually even thought of that. I I don't know. 
um, if Tenshi fans feel friend, uh, feel comfortable friending me on Facebook, but I'm happy to hear from people um, either on my Patria Burchard page, which is just me, or my Patria Burchard Inc. page, which is mostly, as John knows, mostly I just post stuff about the writing business there. Um, either way, uh, I'm always glad to hear from Tenshi fans. Everybody's been so nice to me over the years. Um, I feel it's, it's been a real blessing, really. At first I thought, well, I don't even, it, at first it was just a job that I did. And then it became this thing. Everybody liked it so much. And how lucky was that, that I got to be part of it. But um, people have been really just great all this time. There hasn't been anybody that's been anything but nice. And, well, you know, I, I, I gotta say, uh, you know, I, it's hard to speak for 100% of, of members of anything, but I, I'd like to think in my few years experience, you know, obviously with, with, uh, you know, with, with this crew here and with many other, uh, you know, fellow fans that I've, uh, encountered as well. I've, I've found, uh, Tenchi fans in general to be, uh, very nice and, and, uh, you know, just really courteous and approachable people for the most part. Yeah. And, and I think that's great. And I, I couldn't begin to tell you why <laughs> it is that <laughs> way, but, but I think, I think you're right. It does, uh, it does seem to be that way. And, and, uh, and I, you know, I think, uh, um, I think you've done, uh, so much, um, already, um, Patria, like with the, the Facebook and your, and your own website. And I think those things have all helped. And, and I, I think, um, I think like you said with with Facebook um you know there like we we posted on the forum as well uh for you and and some of the other cast members that have uh made some of their contact information um uh available mm -hmm. uh you know links to your Facebook page and and you know some of it is just uh is just you know people are people are very shy and uh and sure. and, yeah. and they get into that mindset um you know oh I can't you know, I can't ask for a for a friend request from Patria. I, yeah. I can't do that. So, yeah. so I want to say right here and now, I encourage people to friend me on Facebook. And um, I don't know if there's a way to say when they when they send me the request, I'm a Tenchi fan. But if there is, just go ahead and say that, and then I'll I'll know. But a yeah, lot of times, definitely. I can just look at somebody's page and know. <laughs> because they've got anime stuff on the page, or because we have mutual friends who are Tenchi fans, stuff like that. I, I think as as far as you know, kind of why Tenchi has stuck with so many people for so long and so strongly. You know, I've being an avid anime fan and been having been around in anime fandom for well over ten years. It's it's Tenchi is kind of like an enigma. It's kind of like the Tom and Jerry of anime because there was anime before Tenchi and there's anime after Tenchi, but there's nothing like Tenchi. It's it's such it's such a unique experience and that's only personified by the voice cast. I mean everyone who did Tenchi Muyo from you, Miss Burchard, to uh Kate Vote to Matt Miller to Sherry Lynn, each of them had not, I mean, with the exception, of course, of Sherry Lynn, but almost everybody, that was kind of like their unique anime. And mm. that, on top of that, you guys are all absolutely phenomenal voice actors. Mm. So, people, it just, it was, it gelled with people. And then, of course, Tenchi's story is one that was more than right place, right time. And I, I think that, uh, Le leading the pack was the blue-haired space pirate that everybody <laughs> fell in love with, who just happened to have, and this is me being completely sincere, one of the best voice actresses I've ever heard. Mm. So, Gosh, thank you. Well, did you know that, um, I'm, I'm not sure about all the others, uh, I think I conclude, can include Kate in this, and I, I don't know, but Matt and I are both... Shakespearean trained actors. I knew Matt in Chicago. Um, we had both, you know, 
trained in theater there. And so it may well be that it was just a, we weren't all really so much voice actors as just actors. And actors who knew how to act with our bodies as well as our voices. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. But I think a lot of, I think a lot of voice actors are theater trained actors. I'm not sure. I don't know. You're right. I, it is my one and only anime and I don't know that much about what other anime actors do. I I would I would say having um been around and kind of ingratiated myself with how the business works, I think that uh the Shakespearean background definitely helped. Mm -hmm. uh, if if you look at a lot of the uh the Disney movies or I should say the Studio Ghibli movies that Disney releases, they tend to try and get star power behind it. They'll add uh like Liam Neeson or they'll right. add or they'll add someone else and you know, not using Liam Neeson as an example because he is a phenomenal voice actor. Um, but there are some people that just don't get it. You know, they're like mm -hmm. there was uh, in Howl's Moving Castle. I think Christian Bale, and this is just my opinion, obviously. I think Christian Bale didn't quite get the flow of things, so his performance didn't come off quite as well as say uh, yourselves, who are so used, who are well-rounded actors and actresses who were able to just get right into it and click and understand how it works. But well, it was certainly a lot of fun. Um, I can remember sessions. We, we did the first couple of sessions together in the studio together. At least um, you can't fit everybody in the studio at once, but Matt and I worked in the studio together. But after that, we found that it was too difficult to edit, um, to edit the voices together when, because, because we would step on each other's voices and stuff like that. So we started recording separately after that, but even that was fun. Uh, the scripts would come in, they had to be translated from the Japanese into English and then they had to be translated again because they had to be written to match our mouth flaps. And also plus, some things that are funny in Japanese are not funny in English, where they don't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, the stuff that we were saying, uh, I don't think was a lot of what the Japanese actors were saying. Yeah, I think that's uh, that would be a, another, and that'd be a discussion for a whole other uh, Tenchi cast. Is I, I've found that uh, fascinating. Um, like like you said, uh, Patria, there's, uh, you know, uh, humor doesn't always uh, go through, um, you know, from point A to point B. And so I think that's there's some talented people that not only have to translate it, uh, you get a direct translation, but then that just might not click um, yeah. in English. And so then somebody has to kind of reword that and be familiar with with. Uh, American or, you know, if it's shown in the UK, just, you know, with more Western culture uh, than, than the Japanese. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, we have some questions, of course, that uh, I think everybody has questions that they would love to ask their favorite uh, voice, voice actors and actresses, but we will start off with Lauren asking the questions. Yes, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Hi. Uh, my first Hi. question is, uh, how did you get into voice acting for anime? Well, as I said, I had trained in Chicago. I studied acting and, and voice. Um, all actors study voice. Uh, stage actors study voice. And um, I moved to Los Angeles to look for film work and TV work. And... I, this really was a lucky break because I knew Matt and his wife at the time was one of the producers on Tenchi Muyo. So she asked me to, she gave me a script and asked me to make an audition tape, just an audio tape and uh, suggested that I read the Ryoko part. And so I did. I think, I don't remember if I had somebody read with me or if I just read a few of Ryoko's lines or what. I think I must have had somebody read with me, otherwise it would have sounded weird. But I just 
made an audio tape. At this time, it was a cassette tape. God, that was the 90s. And um, gave it to her. And that's how I got the job. So that was pretty lucky. You, you're obviously known for being one of the most notable voices in anime. Yet, wow. And that, that's a fact. Um, really? Yeah. Now I wouldn't know that. <laughs> that's, um, Absolutely. Wow. Uh, it's Gee, true. No, wait, um, could you say that again? I just want to write that down. <laughs> oh, I'd be glad to. No, for the record. Okay. <laughs> Thank um, you. I'll just listen to this podcast over and over and over again just to, when I don't feel good, it'll cheer me up. I'm sorry, please go ahead. Uh, again. <laughs> um, yet in, in your tenure as an anime voice actor, you were only in a few roles, the most, you know, the most lead role being Ryoko uh, in Tenshi, despite your fantastic talent. Was this for personal reasons, or were you just not approached uh, by Pioneer or anyone else to do any other roles? Well, there was... Um... There was one other that I did called Lane, L-A-I-N. Yeah. And yeah. I, it was really pretty much just an extra in that. I went in and recorded a few voices. I think um, I remember Sherry Lynn was there. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, but that was just you know being kind of a background person. I wasn't approached, but I wasn't really looking for voice work either. At the time... We didn't know that Tenshi was going to be a hit, and we didn't know that anime was going to be popular, and I wanted to be a TV star or a movie star. This is where all my effort was going. So I wasn't really looking for voice work. Uh, I wouldn't have turned it down if they had asked me, but they didn't, and, and it wasn't what I was pursuing. So it was not really a good thing or a bad thing. It just didn't work out that way. You have a wonderful reputation of being very friendly and interactive with your fans. Um, what's your favorite thing about your fans? And do you have a particularly favorite memory of an interaction with a fan? Mm. Okay, here's my favorite thing about my fans. I have fans. <laughs> that is just, I mean, how cool is that? I, um, I suppose if I were, you know, Kira Knightley, I might get tired of having fans, but um, I don't get tired of having fans. I think it's a blessing. So that's my favorite thing about having fans. Um, what is my favorite exchange with a fan? I'm not sure. But I have to say, recently, I you know, I, I've been writing this book. It took a long time, and I want to get it published. And... Um, because of the way the publishing industry has changed, I decided to publish it myself. Because so I have to do all the work myself anyway. So um, I'm one of the things I've done to publicize it is hold a contest, a photo contest, where you would send in a picture of, quote-unquote, Camelot, where you are. And I had a couple of Tenchi fans send in pictures of things that they found where they live, uh, Jonathan was one. Um, he there's this like knight in armor out in front of a hotel in his hometown, and he sent in that picture. People loved it, and I posted it on my blog. And there's another guy from um, so Southern Louisiana who sent in pictures of a castle that's a hotel near where he lives, and he wrote he made a big poster that said Camelot and Vine. And he held that up and had his picture taken. And well, I just love that, that people would go to that kind of trouble to participate. And really, they're helping me publicize the book at the same time. And, um, you know, just to win a copy, it, I don't know, that's just a, I'm so delighted and I feel fortunate that people would even want to. Yeah, well, okay. that's that's wonderful. I know you. you I, I find it rather heartwarmingly ironic that you say that you originally wanted to to be a, a film and movie star, and while that hasn't happened yet, I think <laughs> you you've definitely become a star in in your own right, even if it wasn't what you were you were originally going for. Well, thank you. Um, I, you know, I actually got tired of. 
TV acting because I kept on playing, you know, basically judges and doctors and lawyers and and all of it was fun. But after a while, it was the same thing over and over again. And I really wanted to write, so I quit doing it, and I I don't miss it. Yeah. Um, my second question is. Um, What's your favorite memory of working on the show, and why do you think the show has lived on so successfully in the minds of fans? Mm. My favorite memory of working on the show. <sighs> it's kind of tough, but um, we had a couple of really wonderful producers. Um, and one of them was our Japanese producer, Miyoko Muro. And uh, just being in the studio when Miyoko was there and uh, our, um, our director, Jack Fletcher. And, oh, I know, my favorite thing, my favorite memory is also my worst memory. It's when Miyoko really thought that I should sing. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, Ryoko had a... A singing number in one of the episodes and the producers including uh, including um, Jessica Miller who was Matt's wife at the time she is uh, no longer but at the time and they thought oh if I could talk if I had a good speaking voice I would all obviously have a good singing voice and I said no 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 it's not the same it's not no go ahead work on the number bring it in and we'll, we'll just record you singing it and um, it was just awful. And at the time, I was really, really humiliated. But now that I look back on it, it was hilarious because they were all sitting in the booth trying not to laugh while I was hiding behind a wall. I wouldn't even let them look at me trying to sing. Uh, that was probably the worst and best. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not a singer. What was the second part of your question? I was just wondering if you had any opinion on why do you think that the uh, the show has lived on so well in the hearts and minds of fans? You know, I have no idea. I really don't. It was so silly. And uh, Tenchi never picked a girl. And all those girls were in love with him. And why? Uh, maybe if he picked somebody, there would have been no place for the show to go. I don't know. Well, I mean, uh, there there is that too. It's just I don't mm -hmm. know. It's it's something with me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I'm not sure why all these girls were so crazy about him anyway. But they were, and um, what a lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was because he had a house, and they needed a place to stay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it it may be a mystery why. Uh, why all the girls like Tenchi, but it's no mystery why uh, all the guys like Ryoko. <laughs> <laughs> well, she she was shapely, and that hair. Let's let's not forget the hair. Oh yeah, the hair is wonderful. Well, uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for being here, Patria, and for putting up with um, with four people trying to uh, trying to ask you questions. Uh, oh, it's all my pleasure. <laughs> and um, I just I think that's. God, that gets me honestly giddy. That's right. Broke <laughs> it gets me giddy to think that uh, I've been listening to your voice for years, and you said you're going to be listening to this cast, so then you'll be listening to our voices. So I think that's, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's uh, wonderful. Um, so I guess, let's see here. My uh, a question I had, uh, let's see here, so many really, but uh, trying to narrow them down. Um, I was just wondering... Um, you know, because Ryoko is is a character you play. Um, obviously, uh, you lend your you lend parts of yourself to uh, to make her to make her real uh, for us. And I think I speak for everyone here and many other people that uh, you succeeded with with Ryoko. She was very real to to uh, to so many of us, even though she was a, a space pirate slash demon. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> But um, so I was I was going to ask with with uh, you as an actress, um, like how you um, like how much of your of yourself and your own personality uh, do you did you put into 
to being Ryoko um, because I've heard um, not having experience, but that as as if you're an actor, you have to you have to find some common ground with your character and you have to draw that uh, from somewhere. So I was just kind of curious, just like how much of yourself do you see in Ryoko? Are you two similar in some ways or are you are you completely different types of people or mm. Well, um, <laughs> I'm not exactly like her. I mean, I can't walk through walls. I can fly, but I can't walk through walls. Um, uh, it's when you're when you're just starting out as an actor, you have to learn how to throw yourself into characters and. And yet, as you get practiced, you get better at it so that it becomes second nature and you can just take on whatever the character takes on. So um, it's really just a matter of imagination. You start throwing yourself into the character's situations and then you're in those situations. So you're fighting the space battle and you are you know, in the romantic argument or whatever. And I don't mean that you lose yourself because that's not a very professional way to do it. You still have to be using your voice the right way. You still have to be the right distance from the microphone. You still have to be technically proficient. But um, it's, it's something that uh, good actors learn how to do. They learn how to use their imagination to put themselves into the situation the character is in and play it for real. So hmm. I don't know if that answers your question, but um, I, I never would have stood for some of the things that Ryoko stood for. I never would have stayed with a guy that had four other girlfriends. Heck you know, yeah. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, but then again, I have have been in love. I'm I I know how that feels. I'm in love with my husband right now, and and I knew then how that felt. So I could s still project that into Ryoko's character. So you use what you've got, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Oh man, definitely. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry that these are these are such in-depth questions and stuff but uh They're here we questions. had <laughs> everybody's questions are good yeah I, I thought i thought everyone's were too i was hoping mine would be up to par but you know here we've had uh we've had almost what a decade to to sit on these types of questions and, <laughs> and you just gotta answer them right up front um but i guess um my my next question and i hope um this isn't too repetitive because I think, uh, as we were discussing earlier, uh, this kind of came up. Um, but I was just, um, I guess one aspect uh, of my question has to do with, with, uh, with her competing with, with these other girls and with her almost, uh, you know, dogmatically being, being, uh, loyal to, uh, to pursuing Tenchi. And so I, I was just wondering, uh, what you thought, um, Petria, uh, you know, what, uh, what Ryoko's drives and motivations, uh, were for, uh, for just, you know, cause, cause yeah, a lot of us you watching it, we all like Tenchi and we root for him, but a lot of us think, what is it about him that, that all these girls seem to be after him and, and why do they, um, particularly Ryoko, um, you know, why do they fight tooth and nail? For him, and and why are they? Why do they persevere? Well, I can't tell you about the other characters, <laughs> but I think that I think Ryoko has just decided that he's going to be hers, and so once she's made that decision, she is going to be tenacious. She's not going to give it up until she has it. That's just the kind of person she is, or kind of demon she is. <laughs> he he um, rescued her, and she imprinted on him you know, in that beginning, early episode, and he's, he's hers, and he could have all the flaws in the world, that's beside the point, 
she has made that decision and uh, come hell or high water is going to be her. So I, I don't think she would ever give up under any circumstances. Yeah, I, I certainly don't either. And I, gosh, man. <laughs> oh, well, uh, well, thank you uh, for that, Patria, for, for answering those, those questions. It's, it's so, it's so fascinating to hear, you know, heard a lot of intelligent insight and opinions over the years from fellow fans but it's it's obviously you know it's almost on a whole nother level to hear from from the person that that actually you know was kind of the soul of Ryoko and you know and and uh and was you know delivering the lines that uh how she expressed her her desires to to push on and to persevere and and uh I think it's it's also interesting how character kind of you know it transcends even in some ways the the actor and the people that that wrote her lines and such and and yeah you wonder you know what goes on inside her head and uh that's just that's just well yeah. just uh because i don't think that anybody's interpretation is wrong the character mm -hmm. um that's what was going on inside my head that's how mm -hmm. i played her for myself but I think uh, I learned something really great. I, uh, to after we had, I think that I don't think I recorded any Tenchi episodes after 1999. I'm not sure, but I, I took a summer acting course um, at Oxford in 1999, and one of my teachers was Fiona Shaw. And I don't know if you guys have seen the Harry Potter movies, but Fiona Shaw is best known in America for having played Harry Potter's mean, nasty aunt. But in England, she's a very well-known stage actress. She's Irish, but she's, she works all over Britain. And she's a fantastic teacher. And one thing I learned from her, um, among many things, is that the performance or the play itself or the whatever theatrical work you're watching, a movie or an anime, it doesn't happen on the stage or where the actors are working, and it doesn't happen in the audience. It happens somewhere between where those two things connect. So each audience member is going to experience a different, per different performance than the next audience member because they bring their own experience to it. So everybody's experience is different and everybody's experience is valid and everybody witnesses a different show. And I think that's true and I think it's amazing. And that's a wonderful thing, you know? I, I think it's true as well now that you said it. That's just, that, that blows my mind. I think that's, that's fascinating. And yeah. I think you're absolutely right. And even with... Um, you know, as perhaps someday someone amongst us will decipher why Tenji has endured for so long. But I think on that note, for me personally, you know, I've I've watched it and then I, I rewatch it years later and you, you watch anything, you know, uh, you, multiple times and and you take away uh, different things from it every time, you know, and, and there's always there's always some different experience that uh, mm -hmm. that you yourself bring to it. So. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, thank you. That was that was amazingly well, insightful. Thank Fiona Shaw. <laughs> yes, thank you, Fiona Shaw. If you <laughs> if you ever hear this, <laughs> oh. now that you are transitioning from actress, voice actress, to novelist and writer, if the planets aligned perfectly and all the key factors were a green light, would you step into the voice of everyone's favorite space pirate again? Sure. That's an affirmative. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here no, first, no, folks. Yeah. Oh, of course. That's that's a no-brainer. Oh man, reassuring to hear it though from you. I mean, we all figured, you know, that you you enjoyed your time as as Ryoko. So yeah. it's just it's reassuring to hear that uh, it was a positive experience for you as well. Oh, it absolutely was. I really enjoyed it a lot, and um, I you know you couldn't ask for better people to work with and. The scripts were so much fun, and what a great character! Like I said, you know, I 
I got to do some TV shows, and that was fun work, but I got tired of the characters. They were the same character over and over again. But Ryoko, <laughs> what a great character. She's constantly changing. Even though, you know, we always know who she is, she just, she's still full of surprises. And that's a great opportunity for an actor. Yeah, that was like uh, Michael was saying, is, is she's so unique for a lot of us, obviously. That was our first time seeing anime. And anime is, is very different in a lot of ways than just, you know, uh, culture shock and, and those sorts of things from a lot of, uh, a lot of Western material. Uh, but even among anime, and even to this day, uh, she really does remain a, a very, a very unique and a highly beloved character. And of course, you know, you were, you were a part of that, and that's that's just we'll always remember Ryoko, and so we'll always remember you, Patria. <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> I'm a lucky person. And Patria, and Patria, man, I keep saying that. I've heard <laughs> it for so long. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us at Tenchi Cast today. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to the fans out there? Oh, gosh. Yeah, Michael, I, I just want to say thanks. Because uh, in the beginning, I didn't know. I just didn't know what this was going to be what Tenshi was going to be and, and how popular Ryoko was going to be. And I just want to thank everybody for being so nice and for friending me on Facebook and just, just being nice. I, I'm so grateful that people have, some fans have become my friends over the years. I've, some people have really stuck with me and it's just been great. Um, like I said, I've been very fortunate. And I'm grateful to everyone. Thanks. And as long as Tenchi continues to persevere, they will always love you. Aw. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. Be sure to check out Petraea's novel, Camelot and Vine, what it is, when it is published, hopefully sometime this winter. And if you'd like to hear more from Miss Burchard, check out her short audiobook story, Belinda's Birthday, on Amazon. It's a meager 89 cents for a golden voice such as hers. Or, if you're more into photography, check out her blog, The Pasadena Daily Photo. All links, including her own website, are in the description. Petrea? Petrea? Man, I'm going to punch myself so much of this later. Um, if you wouldn't mind... Until next time, stay gold. Stay gold.